Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by the tertiary and quaternary structures of proteins. Now we've already looked at the primary and secondary structures of proteins. Remember that the primary structure is simply the order of the amino acids in a polypeptide chain. The secondary structures where specific regions of the chain then fold and we saw two examples. These are the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. Remember that the secondary structure formed depends on the amino acids present, and secondary structure stabilized by hydrogen bonding between different parts of the polypeptide chain. So in this video, we're looking at the tertiary and quaternary structures. The tertiary structure is the overall three-dimensional shape of a polypeptide chain. I'm showing you a polypeptide chain here. As you can see, this polypeptide chain has not started folding. First, the chain folds into regions of secondary structure, and we can see that here. Once the regions of secondary structure form, the chain now continues folding, forming the final tertiary structure. So this diagram shows the tertiary structure of a real protein. As you can see, it contains five alpha helices wrapped in a very specific pattern around a beta pleated sheet. Now the tertiary structure is critical for our protein functions. For example, the active site of an enzyme depends on the protein forming a very specific tertiary structure. And if we change the tertiary structure of an enzyme, for example by heating it, then the shape of the active site changes and the enzyme can no longer function effectively. We say that the enzyme has denatured, and we look at that again in the topic on enzymes. Coming up, we'll see what's meant by quaternary structure. Okay, so as we've seen, the tertiary structure is really important for protein function. Now many proteins consist of only one polypeptide chain, for example the protein I'm showing you here. However, a large number of proteins consist of several polypeptide chains working together as a large molecule. And I'm showing an example here. This is haemoglobin, which is found in red blood cells. Now this diagram does look complex, but don't be put off by that. Haemoglobin consists of four polypeptide chains forming a large molecule. Scientists call these polypeptides subunits. Two of the subunits are shown in red, and two are shown in blue. Now, the quaternary structure shows how the individual subunits are arranged to form a larger three-dimensional structure. And quaternary structure only applies to proteins with at least two subunits. Now, there is one other point about quaternary structure. Some proteins contain other non-protein molecules forming part of the structure. These are called prosthetic groups, and they help the protein to carry out its role. Haemoglobin contains the prosthetic group heme, which binds to oxygen, and we can see the four heme molecules here. Proteins with a prosthetic group are called conjugated proteins. So, as well as showing us how the subunits are arranged, the quaternary structure also shows us the position of any prosthetic groups. In the next video, we look at the bonding taking place in protein molecules. Mm -hmm. 